the scientific study on reincarnation and more, causality, Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. Part 12 In the last part, we talked about one of Catherine's past lives in which she was a boy who was killed by her present life's boyfriend. She described that her soul floated away from her body, drifted into the air, and then was drawn by an invisible force into a very narrow but warm space. She had entered her mother's womb. The world that accumulates evil will have many disasters. From Catherine's description, we can see that her soul is obviously aware during the process of reincarnation. Thousands of years ago, Shakyamuni Buddha, way before the existence of ultrasound, had precisely described in detail the development of the fetus in the Sutra of the Debt of Gratitude We Owe Our Parents is Too Enormous to Repay. Many people nowadays think that Buddhism is a religion or even superstition. In fact, Buddhism not only consists of very profound philosophy, it is also very scientific. Modern science has gradually confirmed the Buddha's teaching in many areas such as the description of the fetus as stated above. In addition, Shakyamuni Buddha, without a microscope, told his disciples that in a cup of water there exists infinite lives. The explanation of the origin of the universe in the Avatamsaka Sutra, manifested by the heart, altered by consciousness, also confirmed by the cutting-edge science, quantum physics. After analyzing the basic particles of substance, quantum physicists discovered that there is actually no substance at all, only the vibrations of our consciousness. From these facts, we can affirm that Buddhism is an education to teach us the truth of life and the universe. It is not a religion. Many people nowadays have the medical misconception of the fetus being not life and can be called life only after being born. This is a fallacy not only from the point of reincarnation but of science. When observing the photos of a fetus, we can see complete five sensory organs. Even the consciousness, the soul, is there. How could it possibly not be a life? Since we know that fetuses have souls, how heavy would their resentment be after they are killed? So it is inevitable that our planet would have catastrophes. If these countless infant spirits do not get salvation, their grievances would not let those of us who are still alive be free from disasters. According to Buddhism, the origin of this problem is excessive physical desire for lust. This lustful desire is described as licking honey from a sharp blade. Its retribution to one's body and spirit and to others is immeasurably excruciating. The problem is that, as mortals, we are incapable of piecing together the puzzle of cause and effect due to our very limited capacity. The Book of Changes, Yi Jing, states, the family that accumulates goodness is sure to have abundant blessings, while the family that accumulates evilness is sure to have abundant misery. Families are like this, so are societies and the world. In the last part, we mentioned that British historian Dr. Toynbee suggested that we must find a solution from the sage teachings of Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism to save humankind. In recent years, the discussions of Dr. Toynbee's achievements are widely conducted online and in many prestigious universities. Many scholars believe that Dr. Toynbee's outstanding achievement should be honored and reintroduced to the public by republishing his books. For nearly a century, we have failed to take the advice from this remarkable Western historian leading the world to face an unprecedented crisis. Can we save ourselves from this increasing plight? 
it indeed requires a serious introspection. What is the cause of war? In another reincarnation, Catherine had been a pilot in the German Air Force during World War II. Her name had been Eric. He was blessed with a wife and a daughter. The daughter from that life is now her good friend Judy in this life. When Catherine and Judy first met, it was like deja vu. They felt cordial and affectionate with each other at first glance. They understood each other's needs without words. This tacit understanding must be due to their good relationship as father and daughter in the past. Eric's happiness did not last long. At a German military party where everyone was happily singing, dancing, and drinking, suddenly the British-American Allied aircraft came and bombed the German base. In seconds, the party became an ocean of fire. Many people were burned to death by the explosions. Eric sustained serious injuries to his chest and legs and was bleeding heavily. As she described this, Catherine's expression was nervous and distressed. War is brutal. We wish there would never be war in this world, but is it possible? Let us first find out what is the cause of war. An ancient Buddhist poem states, For hundreds of thousands of years, there have been grievances on our plates due to their flesh being eaten by us. Their enmity is as deep as the sea, and their hatred is hard to subside. If we want to know the cause of the calamity of war, we need solely to listen to the excruciating howling sound in slaughterhouses at midnight. Of course, the wails of animals from the slaughterhouse are no longer heard due to improved technology. But the truth of the killings remains the same, and its quantities are way much more than that of the past. The animals we eat now will come to seek revenge when they become humans after completing their retributions in the animal realm. Meanwhile, after using up the fortune of our human realm, we may become animals and be eaten by humans who we had eaten as animals before. This endless cycle will never cease until our awakening. There is only one way to prevent war and suffering. That is, no more killing and to love animals and respect all spirits of different dimensions. Can we prevent war by doing so? Well, war involves a massive and complex shared karma. It is beyond individuals' capability to control. But if we practice no killing and a vegetarian diet, our particularizing karma will improve tremendously, and its benefits are indescribable. This is the truth of life and the universe. It can only be experienced by implementing it. Our planet Earth is now facing a serious crisis. It is really worth for us to ponder in a different perspective. Masters affirm regression therapy. After a while, under the doctor's guidance, Catherine slowly recovered and restored her calmness. She said that her soul drifted out of Eric's body, and she was waiting for someone. The doctor asked, Who are you waiting for? She said, I am waiting for some masters to come. Catherine often reported seeing masters during the transition from one life to another when she was under hypnosis. These masters could sometimes convey messages to Dr. Weiss through Catherine. The master's voice was not the voice of the patient herself. It was very resounding and powerful, a very dignified voice. Later, Dr. Weiss wrote a book based on these recordings. The words from these masters are very wise and filled with philosophy, as if playing the same tune as Buddha Dharma on different instruments. They definitely did not come from a simple-minded person with psychological disorders. 
The voices said that using this method to guide patients into a stable state to cure their psychological illness is the right approach. It can help patients eliminate their inner fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety are only the superficial symptoms of their problems. This approach helps them enter their own deep consciousness to resolve their own problems. The master continued and stated that the existence of the physical body is an abnormal phenomenon. A normal state of existence is a spiritual life. We feel pain in our flesh, but we do not feel pain in the spirit state, only happiness. Spirit life exists in a different dimension where they continuously work on self-innovation and self-perfection. These revelations from the masters correspond to Lao Tzu's saying, My biggest worry is that I have this body. Look, the masters in Catherine's hypnosis confirmed to us that we will be free and normal without a body. Realizing this truth, we should regard our body as a vehicle or as a clothing for our self-perfection. Do not attach to it. Please subscribe and stay tuned to find out how Catherine transformed a Yale Medical University trained professor, Dr. Brian Weiss, from a skeptic to an expert on reincarnation. Thanks for watching. See you soon on part 13.